my big question is, how do you balance the aspect of reason and you know using reasoning in your daily life and making sure that no one is taking advantage of you and that kind of thing with all the other things? Hold that, that question, and if we don't come back to it naturally, bring it back to us before sure. you leave this platform. But there's something else that we really want to give you, because we can feel how steeped you are in the think and grow rich material. In other words, we can feel that you've mm -hmm. been studying it and feeling the power and the value of it. And there is great power and value. But we have a story that we want to tell you that's going to put all of this into context for you mm -hmm. because Jerry, you are aware of Jerry. Mm -hmm. Jerry was studying that for many years before he met us and teaching from it. He held seminars and that book was the textbook that everyone was reading. And it was from that textbook that he was gathering the principles and the stories from his own life that he was explaining. And so one day, not long after Esther had begun receiving us very early stages in 1985 or early 86, Jerry was giving a presentation from that book and he was telling a story, one of his favorite stories from the book about the sharecropper's daughter who was demanding from this very wealthy man, my mammy's got to have 50 cents. And her determination was so strong that this very wealthy man who had picked up a barrel stave and was going to strike her because he was so annoyed by her was overpowered by her determination. And so as Jerry was telling this story from this book, Esther was in the audience and she felt herself all filled up with Napoleon Hill all filled up with him, the clear essence of him. He had been enjoying Jerry's presentation and Esther is sitting there as this open vessel in complete sync with the vibration of that book. And there he is. Esther is full of him. She could hardly sit in her seat. She wanted to go and drag Jerry off the stage and into the parking lot <laughs> so that he could have a conversation with this author of this important to him book. And so when the seminar was over, Esther went to Jerry and said, we've got to go. And he said, wait a minute. She said, we've got to go. We've got to go. They went to the parking lot and Jerry visited with him. Take it easy. <laughs> through Esther. And Jerry said, this book has been amazing. It has helped me so much in all that I am doing. What would you do differently now? He said, first I would have told where it came from, he was receiving it, or in contact with someone else who was. And he said, I would have explained the source energy part of it. And Jerry said, why did you not? And he said, they would not publish it. It would not have been published because the consensus of the people in those days, they were wary about weird things like this. <laughs> brave ones that you are. <laughs> so Jerry was satisfied. He was so thrilled and realizing that Abraham is filling in those missing pieces, those important missing pieces. And we're going to fill some of those in for you right here and now. But there's another piece to this story. So years later, years, years later, Jerry and Esther are um, apart for some rare and odd reason. And Jerry is in a bookstore by himself and he sees a Think and Grow Rich book, but it doesn't look like the ones he's been buying. Very odd, old fashioned cover. So he bought it. He was so excited. And then he bought the version of it that he had last read many years before. And he took them to his hotel room. And that afternoon, while Esther was off doing something else, he went through that book line by line and highlighted the pieces that were in the original manuscript that had been edited out. Mm. Things about source, things about the ethers, things about consciousness, all those things that you've got to know before any of this makes any sense to you. All of these things that you've got to understand before your guidance system even comes into play. In other words, if you don't have a relationship between something and something, you have nowhere to know where you stand. You see what we're getting at? Mm -hmm. And so these are the pieces that we're wanting you 
to find a way of integrating because the answer to every question that you're putting here how do you know how do you know do you read a book of somebody else that knew and you read it often enough that then you know it too that's not how it works is it because words don't teach it's only life experience that teaches and so you've got to find some way of finding some relationship with the source within you those are the questions that you're asking how do I know about source you have to feel that you have to feel when you're in sync with it and when you're not and you have to do it often enough consciously not by default not by just bumbling around and thinking thoughts and focusing on that and focusing on that and feeling good sometimes and not feeling good sometimes you've got to show yourself what feels good and you've got to know why that feels good and what doesn't feel good and you've got to know why that doesn't feel good you have to introduce yourself to your own guidance system that's why we teach meditation because when you meditate you quiet your mind when you quiet your mind as in, in the stopping of thought and there was focusing on a very small thought like the flickering of a flame or the dripping of a faucet or your own heartbeat or Esther likes to listen to the sound of the air conditioner something that's steady but really easy for her to focus upon and find the rhythm of find something that doesn't take your mind into tangents and focus there and in doing so you quiet your own mind and when you quiet your own mind your vibration automatically raises because where you naturally are is up in this high vibration it's only negative thoughts that pull you down into a lower vibration and separate you that's too strong of a word but add resistance keep you from the receptive mode that we've been talking about all day yesterday and all the other days ever 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 hmm. so once you quiet your mind and your vibration raises now you're in the receptive mode and now you can hear what source knows now you can rendezvous with what source is now you can recognize the physical manifestations of all that you naturally are you come into sync with your total self you see that's what Jerry wanted to put on the spine of all books self-help he wanted it in the self-help section not the new age section <laughs> He'd go looking for the books and there they would be down there on the bottom shelf in the corner with witchcraft and <laughs> Esther went into a Barnes and Noble the other day she's sure that Jerry took her there and she did what he always did she went to the section where Abraham books are to find them and so here's a section not a very big section the religious section is Gigantic and this new age section very small section in this bookstore and the sign said in alphabetical order by author so she's going a b c d e f g h h h h i j k h h not there right down there in the corner way down there in the corner <laughs> not even in alphabetical order right where Jerry always said they were <laughs> So hmm. helpful? Yes, thank you very much. So now ask your questions given this platform that you have just found. Same questions that you just asked. Okay, so as far as reason goes, how do you incorporate factoring yourself into the equation and integrating this All right. with daily reasoning? All right, so now reasoning is mostly about exploring circumstances isn't it reason is about cataloging and pigeonholing all of these results that others have well that doesn't seem reasonable to us right now does it to you mm. reasoning we would replace the idea of reasoning with the idea of sensing or feeling the vibe of or following the path of least resistance because when we say to you that your vibrational reality is filled with all of the things that you have been asking for which means all of the things that you have already become and that your source stands there as the knower holder beer broadcaster of all of that and that law of attraction is responding to that so there is this powerful current or path that is calling you so do you really want to reason it out or do you want hmm. to intuitively feel it can you see how your work is singular is to get in the receptive mode and then follow the impulse so your work is nothing more than to get into the receptive mode get into the receptive mode get into the receptive mode Esther knows that her work 
in preparation for this gathering, aside from making sure that everyone has shown up with all the equipment and stuff and chairs and things that you need, her work is very simple. Just be in a place where you can align because the receptive mode is all she has to accomplish. Everything else follows from that, you see. And it's true for all of you. Everything follows. Everything that you want follows from your practiced. What were Napoleon Hill's words? Persistence. Persistence. He talked about definiteness of, of purpose. purpose. Definiteness of purpose, meaning clear-minded. When you say, I want it, but, or I want it, but look over there, or wouldn't this be nice, but that's what's going on. That's not definiteness of purpose. That's watering it down. That's sloppy vibration. That's putting as much resistance in it as there is desire. That's moving not forward. That's not being in the receptive mode. There's no possible way. And so many people are standing right in that place in that place of reasoning, which they translate out to mean weigh the pros and the cons, the pluses and the minuses, the splitting of the energy, split my energy, split my energy, and then be reasonable. And we say, get into the receptive mode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was great. Thank you. Yes, it and is. my last question is you mentioned yesterday about the growth of consciousness, I guess, worldwide as in, I was wondering... No, that isn't what we said. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. Your translation of what we said is close to what we said. We are talking about this is the time of awakening. And that's different. You see, that implies that consciousness has been puny and it never has been. That implies that source hasn't always been beaming it. The consciousness is tremendous. In other words, it's not that source is beaming in a stronger way. It's that more and more are getting into the receptive mode. That's the change that's happening. That's what, the change that's happening. That's an important distinction. And what could happen in the next decade or so? And how does the, any type of corruption with governments play a part in that? Or is that not even worth worrying about? Stuff happens. <laughs> stuff happens and little of it has anything to do with you and the less you get hooked in to the drama and trauma that is being represented as something that you need to be reasonable about mm -hmm. then the more likely you are to be in the receptive mode so that you are one of those who thrive under any and all conditions mm. don't get caught in the trap of trying to serve those who are not in vibrational sync because you can't People were saying to Jerry and Esther all the time, Esther still gets letters about it. Why are you not promoting yourself in a stronger way? Why are you not on television? And Jerry always said, and Esther said it and means it too. This is what it's about. It's the expansion of the message. Law of attraction takes care of those who are ready for that. Hmm. You see? Thank you very much. That Isn't was great. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Thank you.